Raptors grind out a win against the Minnesota Timberwolves, 103-91. I'm Randy Urban, and welcome to Raptors Nightcap. Tonight, we're joined by Jack Armstrong, Paul Jones, and Leo Routens. Leo, hard-fought win, but what kind of issues did Minnesota create for the Raptors tonight? Well, their their zone bothered the Raptors. I mean, plus, also you got to think about, you know, Chris Finch and Nick Nurse are kind of like mirror images of one another, and uh, you know, this is the first time they've actually met as head coaches in the NBA. So uh, I think that uh, contributed a little bit uh, to the kind of slowness of this game, if you want to call it that. But you know, the zone was an issue, and it took mm-hmm. the Raptors a little while to figure out how best to attack it. Uh, but they started, you know, a little bit more dribble penetration, getting into the getting into the gaps. Uh, they got a, the defense got better. They got out in transition. They stopped giving up any second chance opportunities. And uh, and I thought their bench gave them a nice little lift coming down the stretch. So you know, they they hey, they did what they had to do. You got a that last game before the All Star break, Jack. You know, mm-hmm. you mentioned during the game. You know, guys already pictured themselves on the beach stretched out. So you got to get that game. You got to get that mm-hmm. game. And the Raptors were able to focus in better than Minnesota. You guys have already pictured yourself on the beach. So I, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Long time ago. <laughs> uh, Jack, how did the Raptors uh, swing the game in the, in the end of the third and, and beginning of the fourth quarter there? Oh, their defense was great. Uh, what they held, they held the Minnesota guys to 29% in the second half, 21% in the fourth quarter. So, you know, they did a great job, uh, you know, chasing them off the line, contesting threes, winning loose ball battles on the glass, uh, just playing with more juice. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and it was interesting to start the fourth quarter. Nick Nurse went with Pascal Siakam and Malachi Flynn, and that gave uh, that gave a few extra minutes rest to Gary Trent Jr. He was a different guy when he came back in. Mm-hmm. Um, so to me, you know, the, as Leo mentioned, I thought the bench was great tonight. Precious Achua's defense, Chris Boucher's rebounding and defense. Thaddeus Young was excellent. Uh, Malachi Flynn did a nice job. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was really a, 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 a just a, a heck of a win. I mean, this mm-hmm. team's got 30, they're 32 and 25. There's seven games over 500 at the break with, with 25 games to play. And, you know, going into the season, I don't think a lot of people had the Raptors where they are right now. So uh, I, I think they're taking big strides. And th- this tonight was without Fred Van Vliet. Mm-hmm. Jo- Jonesy, Chris Boucher, Thaddeus Young, really solid tandem off the bench. It's interesting when you look at those guys in their games, they each combine to give you a little bit of everything. And that's a great thing for this team going forward. It is. It is, Randy. Um, uh, I've always said this. I mean, I, I've liked Thad Young uh, for a long time. And it, and it was interesting to hear Masai and Bobby talk about that, how they wanted him and, and they couldn't get him because he was in such demand. But, I mean, you saw what he did tonight, uh, cutting uh, his defense. I mean, little things like Boucher's going for a rebound. Thad Young is boxing a guy under, underneath the basket and pushing him into the stanchion. Like the little things that he does, and and he's not a guy that you have to um, you have to feed. You don't have to run stuff for him. He understands how to play. How many buckets did he get tonight from cutting when somebody else was driving, and and just the little things that he did. So I, I thought he was good tonight, and that's mm-hmm. the kind of play that you need off the bench. You don't need spectacular stuff. If there's a lead, hold on to it. If we're in a deficit, uh, uh, you know pare it down a bit. Mm-hmm. And I, I just thought, both, and, and Chris Boucher for the last maybe 15, 20 games now has settled into his role. He's mm-hmm. gotten off the three. He's, he's gone back to the guy he was at the start of the season, two seasons ago where he made the impression as an energy guy. Mm-hmm. Leo, I just want to go back to Gary Trent, who obviously was great tonight with 30, but what stuck out to me is that he starts hot. I think he starts five of eight. Then he goes one for his next nine, and then he kind of catches fire again. So that sort of oscillation, but like regrouping is important and, and hard to do, right? That's, that's the making of a, a really good player that's able to kind of forget about the one for nine stretch and then continue to make big shots. Well, to put it frankly, that's a scorer's mentality, right? Yeah. Scorers don't – scorers aren't sitting there going, let's see, um, two for six, I got to go four for – this. they don't do that. Scorers don't think that way. Scorers say, give me the ball. Mm-hmm. And they believe the next shot's going in. And he's got a scorer's mentality. Uh, you know, and he does a lot of, lot of things that you – know, the worst thing you can do is get stuck on one way to score, 
right? You know, my, my three is not falling. I'm just going to keep shooting threes. He doesn't get stuck. He finds different ways to score. Um, and, and, you know, you got to thank Patrick Beverly. I think Patrick Beverly got him going at the beginning of the game. And Gary Trent's a tough kid, man. You want to you mm-hmm. talk a little trash to him, get him going. And, you know, he's coming off of two sub, you know, subpar Gary Trent games. Well, that was, a, that was a good shot in the arm right off the top of the game. So he came mm-hmm. out with a burst, went a little flat. But, again, has the scores mentality, came back and finished strong. So uh, he's the guy that believes in himself. His teammates believe in him. Uh, most of all, his coach believes in him. And, you know, he wants the ball in his hands and he trusts him. So uh, he's in a great place right now. Uh, I think, what is that, eight 30-point games uh, for him. And uh, I still think it's he's going to get better because, remember, as good as they've kind of finished, uh, you know, over the last month and a half, this, this group has only been together. Uh, that kind of uh, that period of time. Right. So they're going to continue to figure each other out, continue to get better, how to get, how to get each other shots. Uh, and so as a score, I think he's going to be even better. Mm-hmm. Jack, let's uh, let's go to Beverly then, as Leo mentioned, what'd you think about how the refs handled that Ananobi Beverly double foul? Well, flagrant and, and uh, I don't think they handled it very well. Uh, I mean, I understand the call on OG, uh, but clearly if you're going to use the replay, you can see what Gary, <laughs> you can see what Beverly did. Uh, OG is the most mild mannered, chill guy. He's mm-hmm. not doing that stuff without someone doing something just as bad to him. And you, you saw it on video and yet uh, they turn around and reward the guy with two free throws. And after what he pulled the stunt, he pulled to start the game. So, but Hey, uh, it is what it is. The game's <laughs> over now. Uh, and I said this on the air, Beverly's that guy. When he's on your team, you love him. When he's on the other team, you just absolutely hate him. Well, hey, uh, John, I'll say this. Hey, just so to Jack's point here, you talk to people in Minnesota, and they love Patrick Beverly. They said he's sure. changed the culture of that team. Defensively, there's a whole different mentality, and it's carried off the court as well. These guys play harder, and they're more they're they're more committed to the game at the defensive end of the floor. And everybody to a man says it's Patrick Beverly, and they extended his contract because of that. So mm-hmm. you know, like Jack said. When he's not on your team, you hate this guy, right? You want to you want to knock him out. But when yeah. he's on your team, you love this guy. Well, well, Jonesy, like, and I, and I get that, and I love that about him, and I and I don't, I like that type of play. I like that hard nosed guy. But there's something about sometimes the way he plays that there's there's like this disregard for the guy getting injured, and that's what sort of bothers me. Well, he takes tough fouls, and yeah. and the thing I, I think the thing that that strikes a chord with me the wrong way is he's one of these guys I call one way toughness. Like he'll, he'll clap his hands and get in your face. And when he knocks the ball away from you, he'll nod his head like, no, no, no. But then he flops at the, uh, at, like at the first chance, right? Like, like which one is it? And yeah. you know, tonight I thought he took a really hard foul on Gary Trent jr. We've seen, yeah. we've seen less than those reviewed for flagrant ones. But maybe you're a defensive player. The reputation allows you to do that. I just, I, again, the ultimate compliment, as Leo and Jack both said, when he's on your team, when he's not on your team, you want to knock him out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Leo, was there an annoying player that you remember playing against similar to that? Yeah, he, he's on a screen. Uh, he went to Oakwood. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, uh, uh, I mean, everybody's got, you know, there's always guys that you just want to punch in the face. Right. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, hey, let's, you just gotta, Leo, Leo uh, let me say this. Give me a name. Randy, on, Randy, on a, on a, on a lesser note, yeah. because he was an all-star, how many people looked at Kyle Lowry like that? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. When yeah. he was in Toronto. Right. How many looked at, yeah. how many people looked at Kyle like that? Right. Yeah. So, like I said, when he's on your team, you love the guy. Yeah. Take, taking charges in the All-Star game. Nobody ever did that before Kyle Lowry, right? Um, Nobody plays okay. defense, so I don't take a charge. Yeah. Uh, so, Leo, you have no name to give me here? Is this what you're telling me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, you know, over the years, there's a lot of guys, like I said, yeah. you just want to knock out. And, and, it, and uh, you know. Anyone want to uh, knock you out? <laughs> uh, probably. Probably. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I will admit on occasion that uh, – you know, I will do a few things as well, but that, that's part of the game. You know, it's yeah, part of the game. Yeah. All right, Jack, you touched on this a little earlier, but let's go into it a little bit deeper here before we wrap up. All-Star game, of course, is this weekend. Just what are your thoughts on where the Raptors are right now? I like where they are. 
You know, you got 25 games left. Big stretch coming out of the break. Yeah. I mean, you got four games at Charlotte, at Atlanta, at Brooklyn, and Brooklyn right back here on a back-to-back. And those teams are eight, nine, and ten, and you're seven right now. So right out of the shoot, uh, these are going to be four intense games. But I like where the Raptors are at. I mean, I think if you look at where everyone had the Raptors going into the regular season and where they are now, I think they've made big strides compared to where they were a year ago. And mm-hmm. I think if you're a Raptor fan, you've got to be really pleased with the the, the new foundation that's being laid with this group uh, to, to kind of build from here. So uh, I like where they're at. I think it's just all positive stuff right now. Mm-hmm. Jonesy, your, your take? Uh, roles have been clearly defined. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, people understand the chemistry and how to play. Guys are staying within their personalities. And because of that, the machine is working well, right? The, mm-hmm. the, the round object on the front of the car is a wheel. It doesn't all of a sudden say, hey, I want to be a steering wheel on the inside of the car. No, you do your job Mm -hmm. to help the thing function properly. And I think all the guys understand that. And the coaching staff has made that clear. This is going to be a tough out if they're healthy. Mm -hmm. Leo? Yeah, uh, you know, to think that if you would have, you know, early mid-May say this team is going to be in the playoff hunt and they're going to have an eight-game win streak and all this stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of people might say, I don't know about that. Uh, but you, now you're seeing getting healthy, you know, Pascal becoming Pascal, what everybody's been waiting for, uh, you know, Fred's play. Uh, you know, this, this is a team, you know, their starting five can play with anybody. And maybe we saw a little bit of that bench, you know, making a big difference in this game. If, if, mm-hmm. if the bench could be a difference going forward, uh, staying healthy. Uh, you know, this team, this team, I've said it before, I would not want to have to play them in the first round, second round. They, they're going to be a tough out uh, mm-hmm. as long as they, as long as they can stay, stay, to, stay healthy. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, you're going to leave it there. Great stuff as always. Go get some rest before your all-star breaks. I know you guys are going to be partying like crazy. Uh, next game for the Raptors, Friday, February 25th, right after the all-star break in Charlotte against the Hornets. Tip-off goes at 7 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you then.